your administrative folks facilities. Let's check our expansions, you know, our needs for our expansion. Just run through the priorities again with that level group. Look at our utilizations to just firm up that, in fact, uh, the directions that we had presented uh, were correct. And we have done that. And we're prepared to come back tonight uh, and talk to you about the results of these uh, meetings that we have had over the summer uh, with the administrations of each school and to talk about those results and make a recommendation to you on the next steps you know, to follow in the bond implementation and facilities upgrades. Um, we, in, in general, then we'll, we'll give you the results. We'll talk about our budget framework and then those immediate next steps uh, that we are suggesting. Oops. So over the summer, starting in, uh, I think we met in June and July, and then again in August in a couple of time frames, we met with each of the facilities listed at the high school, junior high, elementary, intermediate, and primary. We went over the uh, spreadsheets and the uh, agenda list that we developed in the bond issue and reviewed those with the folks. Went over uh, utilization plans for each of the schools. They did some homework for us. We got back together, uh, re-looked at those priorities again. And in general, I'm, I'm reporting to the board tonight that it was a good exercise. Uh, it's something that we need to do and we will continue to do as we go forward with the actual planning and design. Um, but it was a good step. There were some minor, minor adjustments that we made to it. Some in the amount that we're, we were building new that varied a little bit, you know, for us, but not a great deal. Um, we went through a complete utilization study again of the, of, the, of the schools by name and by room and by use, not only the existing, but of the new expansions that have been, you know, shown to you. And really, again, got comfortable again, but we're making the right decisions. These are the needs we really are. Uh, in need of the expansions and the changes that we've proposed. We all know that the list is is longer than, than phase one will take. So we, we went through that again. A few new things surfaced, as they will. Uh, and we'll talk about just a few of those tonight as we go through the plans. But in general, I think I can report to you it was a good exercise. Uh, we were very thorough with it. I have to congratulate and thank all the folks over here that are at this table. It was a very a collaborative environment. It was not uh, groups just focusing on their school. The way it was pre presented to each of the groups was, look, we are a team, we have multiple facilities and needs. We have a certain amount of money that we've talked about in the past and they're well aware of that. We need to get the highest and best use of that money. So not only did we talk about the utilization at each of the schools individually and reprioritize or look at that, we also showed the other schools to the other folks and said this is why you may not be getting item a through e you know you're only getting d and c a great understanding you know from everybody and a lot of support and in fact i'll show you in detail in the plans one of the major additions that was uh because of the funding, the way the math is working was not on the list we were able to reprioritize it to the other schools and we think have a mathematic equation, money-wise, I think we can pull that very important project back onto the plate to be done in this phase one. So with that exercise that you asked us to do, again, it was uh, very helpful. And I think now we have, I think I can safely say, I told them I'd say this to all the group, they're all aware of, in general, what we're going to be doing tonight and understand, you know, what the direction is. Um, but there's more planning to do, obviously, uh, as we go forth and a lot more meetings that we'll have these folks in the group. Um, so with that, I'll get this by the end of the show here. This is just an example uh, of some of the homework uh, utilization verification that we did. Um, after we went through the priorities again, each group was issued a blank plan with the additions uh, and modifications that had been talked about in early planning, uh, earlier planning meetings, and we're asked to go back and label our rooms. Let's just make sure by labeling our rooms and our head count that the need is there. Now, we didn't have any doubt that they'd be able to fill those rooms up very quickly. And in fact, they were filled up very quickly. So, uh, but again, it was a good process because out of that, there were some shifting and some utilization needs in some of the rooms that are going to be looked at being changed. So we were actually kind of starting that design process through that. 
So they did a lot of homework and a lot, a lot of work to, to help us get to this point tonight. So what I'd like to do tonight is run through uh, really the, the three schools that we've been focusing on and then look at the high school which had, uh, uh, had a little bit more priority uh, of need come to the surface that we want to review with the board. Um, on the left is obviously the floor plan. We'll go through what all the colors mean. On the right are designations uh, separated for, and this will be the case for all schools. Additions uh, is the tan. Renovations is green. And blue deals with our restrooms and our ADA uh, issues across the board. And then we have our miscellaneous category down here, which for each of the schools is about the same. It's our cameras, security films, access control security items that we've talked about with the board. They're in kind of a general category because they're difficult to show on the plan. So, and, and the other item that we'll talk about is, again, we've had costs running on our spreadsheets that you've reviewed. We've been able to fine tune those a little bit with a little bit better square footages. Um, we've actually gone and done some layout work of some of the additions so we can tighten up the square footages, tighten up the numbers, and have some more reality to these because it becomes important when we start adding these together, okay? So I'm gonna run through each of the schools here, starting at the top of the additions. At uh, the primary school, um, again, one of the reduction areas uh, was here at the primary. We had uh, seven class, or I'm sorry, we had eight class, it was started at 10, uh, we had nine shown, and now we were able to, with reutilization of some of the other rooms, cut that back to a six room addition. Um, they're gonna be consolidated in their kind kindergarten all into a wing, consolidated in their SPED and PTOT into an area. Um, and then we were able to reutilize some of these other spaces and capture the immediate need. We've left the area that we had called out for future expansion as future expansion when that need really hits because this is one of those times when we need other things more than that additional addition. And that's helped fund uh, some work at the junior high that we'll go over in a little bit. So that's how this process has worked exactly how it should. Um, and through uh, uh, another uh, accomplishment here is the relocation of our administrative suite and incorporating that in with our secure best bill, which will be consistent throughout each of the schools as one of our goals. Then there's some miscellaneous renovations for counselor space, uh, speech area taking over in the abandoned area that was relocated. Uh, adding an additional art room, again, by repurposing, relocating music, so it allows us to do our expansion and relocation of administration. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about our restrooms. Each of the schools has a story to tell about their restrooms. <laughs> They're very interesting. They're all very similar. We would like all brand new ones, okay? We're looking first at our first filter at ADA compliance. And right now our goal is to create a, on any each level a staff and a boys and girls ADA compliant restroom so that each facility has a restroom that's compliant. Not all the restrooms are gonna be compliant after phase one. Um, but that's meeting the intent of the code you know, so that we have that taken care of. That's what you're seeing here. The other restrooms that don't have any color in them do not mean they do not need work. They could use a refresh, but at this point, we're accomplishing the major targets of code compliance. So that's why you'll see one or two of the restrooms highlighted that we think is in the best area to take advantage of the greater population, you know, of where that would be. And in some cases where we think we can do more with the dollars we have and still meet the code compliance. So, um, and then some smaller areas where we're creating ADA staff toilets, that is also a code issue. And I'm gonna go over the prices um, here on a kind of a cumulative slide at the end, but each of our components are classroom additions and there are various renovations. And I have a plan, by the way, to be able to read better. Uh, I'll leave on it with you. Um, we, we list the work being done, the space and its use, the square footage, and then the cost opinion. How we come up with those cost opinions as we've talked before is based on our historic data of renovation or additional work in here over the last five years and then we have put uh, a time frame or an escalation factor on that for one year 
through the end of 2018. That's the best we can do right now of achieving what the market value is going to be, and we all talked before, we won't know until we bid the project down. And then on the bottom, when we bring our bottom line down, we're, we're adding a 12% design construction contingency to that for conditions that we don't know about yet when we tear into these spaces, okay? It's just a good plan. I will tell you from the first time when we met, we were carrying a 15%. Now that we know more about the buildings, we know more information about the planning programming, we feel we can drop that to a 12% which helps us put more money back into the project. Um, we won't drop that 12% until we're, in our minds, until we're through our construction. <coughs> and then that could be dropped off. And then obviously after the bid, we'll know exactly what the market costs are. We'll probably recommend to the board to carry a two to 3% contingency just for unforeseen conditions during construction. But you can see how that what if money kind of goes down and more it goes into the project. But this is, we think, an appropriate level in all these formulas that have been done the same way. So um, all costs per square foot. So we think in the primary school, we've got the space, the additions, the repurposing, the uh, security upgrades at the entrances, um, our, our classrooms utilized better, and they've made a good bend in the work that they need to have done here as a phase one for it. I'd like to come back to these plans if you like, but I'll figure I'll go through all of them first. Uh, do, do you? Go ahead. I, I think some, I don't know if Eric can see well. I, we, have, we have copies. I, I, I only brought one copy. Did we oh, do you want? Them? Okay. We have these out. Can everyone see okay? I mean, I, I think Greg's probably want to go through it all <coughs> slide and slide so everyone's with him. But sure. I just emailed it to everyone in case you want to pull it on your phone as well. So. Um, I can't see anything on my phone. So, <laughs> so does, I that, need big. does that pricing include uh, like for the classrooms, desk, and stuff for so that? I'm gonna, where is that? Been? Darn it, I put it in the wrong order. I knew I would do that. Let me, let me skip ahead just for a second, just to answer that question in general. So if we go through these other plans, <laughs> so let's go to the budget framework and then I'll go back to the plans. This is the budget sheet that the format we've been showing you all along. It basically uh, starts down here at our bond amount, and then we talk, we've got the categories uh, listed furniture and fixtures is up here, you know, for the classrooms. Okay. We've got other categories that um, the district has been tracking themselves with some costs mm -hmm. and some allowances that we pull out mm -hmm. of the budget. So what we're tracking right now for the plans I'm showing you is about $9.6 million worth of construction work. As I've talked talk to you several times, that's the number I'm interested in, because that's what the bid needs to be on bid day. Um, the rest of it, we're tracking numbers. And I even have a, a $100,000 contingency in this number for your items to be bought and by the district. So we're tracking buckets of money, but it all comes back up to what I'm interested in showing on these plans. Okay. that answer would be no, it's not, it's not. We flipped to the elementary school. Again, we've gone through the same process uh, with them, their category starting their additions, uh, a six classroom addition. Here off the back of the building is a two-story addition, creating six classrooms in a very efficient manner off the back of our two-story condition. Um, we have our administrative suite that's being relocated up to the front. It's an addition onto the front of the building. It creates our administrative suite and our uh, secure entrance vestibule. In this location right now, we have a bit of a, uh, a different scenario that by putting the addition here, we feel it's best that we'll actually enter the school coming down a walk and turning into the vestibule so, because our office space wants to be out here in front and that we don't create an extra long corridor of wasted space to get out to the front. By that, we're going to, you're going to see some money involved for a courtyard area that helps us draw people back and go into the protected vestibule. So we have a good visibility approach by the windows here in the administrative suite and the same secure entry and into the administrative suite before they'll go into the hallway that we would have in a normal situation. Um, so this is a little bit unique because of the footprint, but we think it still will work very effectively. Part of, the, part of it has to do with the grades that are on that building too. The right. finished floor is higher than our parking lot. 
So we need to bring the people back to the back area to bring them in. That way we don't have a lot of ramps or stairs yeah. from here into the building. We make up that grade naturally back into here. So it really works quite well for us functionally. We don't have a lot of wasted corridors. Um, when we relocate administration here, it allows us to repurpose the current area and enlarge the nurses area and create space for counselors who currently don't have spaces now that they need to work in. Um, uh, the court guard, if I go to four, we're gonna relocate the teacher's resource area from above the state because it's not ADA compliant. Rather than spending a lot of money doing the work there, we repurpose and reutilize and we can create that area here and then repurpose this for cafeteria storage where we don't need the ADA access. So without spending much money at all, we can repurpose these rooms and with the addition of the classrooms, it gives us the freedom to do that and not spend money on renovation. Um, seven is creating a self-contained sped room, additional sped room that needed with an additional toilet uh, directly off the room, which is a uh, high priority for them. Um, then the remainder, the restroom upgrades that we've talked about before, we've selected two of the restrooms. Now in this particular case, I'm breaking our rule because they probably win the award for the worst restrooms. Yes. Okay, so we could not avoid making <coughs> one on each floor ADA compliant and then touching the other ones with finished upgrades. So there's an allowance to go in there and make them better than they are. You know, that's the one school that we felt needed that the most. So we've got an allowance for each of the other restrooms to go and do some nice finish upgrades, you know, for them. Uh, downstairs, again, the lower part of the addition, and then again, adding a boys' restroom and then uh, ADA compliance uh, for the others down. So they have to be on each level has to be ADA compliant. So again, their numbers, their square footages, their allowances, and they equal a uh, dollar value in our contingency, and we'll bring these all together in a, in a little bit. Just a question. Sure. You use the word finished. Yes. Is that what you mean? I was under the impression that the plumbing, per se, so it's not just finished work, it's actually redoing the plumbing. We've got an allowance to go in there and, and do, do all of that. the worst, okay. you know, for each of those. That's, that's better in the worst shape. Right. Yeah. Right. the junior high. These were the troublemakers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we all know that junior high needs a lot of work. Needs a lot of attention, and you're going to see in the bottom, uh, there's the bulk of the money for one school is spent here at the junior high, but I don't think that's any surprise uh, to anyone. And we spent a lot of time working with them and reaching their highest and best use uh, with it and security was a major concern for them and basically also trying to get everybody back into the building as opposed to being outside the building was a major concern you know with that so very similar to the other locations i'll start at the top of the additions um, again they reduced by one room or two rooms i can't remember the original count um, again by reutilizing some other internal spaces uh, using the addition very efficiently and then being able to repurpose some of some of the internal rooms um, to create additional classroom or user space uh, through that addition. So very efficient use of our expansion. Creating seven new classrooms out here. Again, you can see the layout trying to connect in to the various corridors. So it makes a nice clean uh, loop, secure loop, and very easy to manipulate these classrooms and have changeable uses over the next several years. We've left ourselves opportunities again for expansion you know, corridors out, so always thinking about that. Uh, we do create a new set of restrooms in the back, which is needed with this size of an addition. Again, so they'll get a new set of restrooms back there, back in the corner next to the, to the classrooms. The number two is to uh, build an addition on the side with our weight room, fitness room, girls locker room, uh, coach's office, here about 6,000 square feet. We were able to reduce the size of that from about 7,500 to 6,000 by doing some planning and again, shrinking the building down to where it needed to be. This allows us to completely abandon you know, the occupied annex building uh, and pull, pull the kids in. So we're not using that facility. Our electric is going to be relocated down to the lower basement. 
because there were some modifications and some code upgrades that we would need to make to that building to continue to occupy it. So in looking at that versus building the new building, it offsets the cost of the new building. You were gonna spend some of that money anyway, and that building allowed us then to repurpose areas and build less expansion of the classrooms. So there's a, there's a dual benefit to that, but I would say the main benefit is to pull everyone back inside the secure environment, which is very important to that group and makes a lot of sense. As we move into the renovation aspects, again, relocating their administrative suite and creating that secure entry works very well here at this school. Um, repurposing some of the existing rooms again for various uses because of the addition uh, helped us to build a smaller addition. Um, along with the gymnasium, uh, we talked about uh, moving uh, the girls' locker room out here. As we put new bleachers in, we're losing storage in the gymnasium. We're gonna repurpose what is now the girls' locker room into storage and coaches' offices. Back in which is a need. It's a low cost dollar to create that, but they do need storage in there. And it allows us to get ADA compliant restrooms immediately in the new construction, which we would have to do anyway. So again, there's an offset, you get dual purpose out of making one move, which we think is very beneficial. Same way with items uh, 10, this is the current boys locker room. Um, it is not ADA compliant, it's very inefficient in its layout. So we're gonna, when we make the compliancy upgrades, we're gonna make it more efficient and there even might possibly be some additional stories that we can create just because of the inefficient layout in there. Uh, and then 11 is back to our standard of let's make one of our restrooms ADA compliant up near the entrance, and then um, we were in compliance at least under that category. So with our two additions, this one in the square footage, um, we, we are at the, the higher end of, of the money spent you know, at, at a location here, but it's well justified. It's just the square footage that's needed. Uh, Science labs. Okay. You're going to get some of what you want, and you're going to get not some of what you want. Um, when I go back to the synopsis, we talked about that, we discussed that, and uh, Heath actually sent us some information about what he felt was needed in those rooms. It currently doesn't make the cut. Now, that's what we're bringing to you. We're bringing to you a scenario tonight with these, these specific tasks, telling you what it costs, and then giving you some opportunities. I will tell you, in the fine tuning of this, a lot of these are domino effects in each of these schools. We've tried to package them that we build an addition, something moves out, move something into it. Not create multiple projects, but finish one. You know, as, one, as something starts, we backfill and it makes some sense as a package. We don't have a lot of opportunity to say, well, don't do number four here. Right. Well, four is caused by number three and number two and number one. So we had to look at that and change because that just makes good sense. So, how to spend the so money. what was the cost you came up with for the science web? Probably about a half million dollars. And we didn't know that before. Oh. I think yeah, we had, I'm just because I, think I had a hundred thousand. I thought that hundred thousand that was kind of a given as part of this project. But. You know, and and so and what took its place? Well, <laughs> everything. It, everything. Let me, everything let me else. Do the math. Okay. And then you can you can tell me what you want to replace, Brad. That's okay. exactly what the workshop is. Before you go to any further, mm -hmm. just real quick clarification: mm -hmm. the students that are coming in from the one annex building, but we have students in more than one annex building, right? Right. So no. do you think this is going to let you bring really everybody in, even yes. the gate students out there? Yes. Yeah. With, no it, with what, this plan, we will not have any kids outside on a. That's uh, other than someone taking their kids outside. Right. Whether but there won't be classes. Right. This will not. Gonna, yeah. Right. And short of that, it seemed like we weren't, we weren't accomplishing the goal. Short of bringing them all in, it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. you know, if that was one of the, probably the main goals of the whole bond issue, mm -hmm. in the public is to secure environments. Yes, right. So our last, the reason you're not seeing the intermediate schools, I think we presented before, it was there were no additions, no renovations, it was all in that miscellaneous category of security upgrades. So we didn't bother to do a plan for that. Not that we're ignoring the intermediate school, it's just following that. So the high school, 
and then another one that originally we had the priorities from our main spreadsheet that you remember was a 20 million dollar cost originally the high school was slated only to get the security upgrades um, so we went back and we, we, we still had conversations with them to talk about you know their future expansion some of their other needs and a couple of other things came up that we wanted to present to the board that, that are important. Um, and I'm going to start with just the front door. You know, as we started to discuss the security upgrades at the entrances, we know by floor plan that this school doesn't work as well to do our standard come into the vestibule, go into the office without a major redo. Yeah, with it. So we looked at solutions on how can we handle that and one of the solutions was to move the resource officer, create a space up here next to the entrance so at least that resource officer was invisible and could be there at certain points in time to be that added protection along with some additional monitors and increasing the size of the monitors and then the camera you know, scenario and the lockdown of the vestibules. That combination was, was talked about, that would be acceptable to upgrade what we're currently doing. You know, with it. So, so we put some dollars in here um, to create that resource space you know, at the front entrance uh, as that intermediate step because we don't have the ability to move the office up to the best we would like to. So what would this 10 by 10 space for $50,000 look like? It would be a workstation and the question would be would it, would it be enclosed, would it be open, uh, you know, piece that could be secured when they're not there. I think that's some of what we were putting some money in, running some data, running some electric to it, mm -hmm. lighting, you know, just creating. And that those are allowances, you know, that we have and that we haven't designed it, but it would take it would take some dollars to create that space. <coughs> what were those classrooms for? I didn't know we were short of the classrooms there, but when we <coughs> When we began to hear some of the conversations about the expansion and the double use of rooms, the teachers on carts, um, counselors in closets, they have utilized that building 110%. So will this take care of teachers will have their own classroom instead of being on carts? It begins, <coughs> correct. This is a, a, an eight classroom addition, right. you know, with it, again, two stories, you know, with it. And yes, that will greatly relieve the pressure of what they're currently seeing with their special programs not being uh, in, in proper places or their teachers doubling up and being on cards, which nobody wants that I, scenario. I did not know we had teachers on. Yeah. They just roll the card around? No kidding. That's not fun. And uh, they were being good team players and saying we can make do. There's others that need more, but in these conversations, we were pulling that out and thought the board ought to know that you know we they were always on the major list they just weren't in the phase one that we've been talking about that maybe there's uh you know a need to, to have that discussion amongst this group about their need, need to be talked about so this addition kind of Help eliminate some of those signs. That's what I was going to say. This well, yeah, don't, don't even go there yet. <laughs> this this one point nine million is not in our formula yet. I'm going to show you if I get through that. I just thought it was important tonight to bring this up to the board that there is some need still left that's pretty serious, but we're always going to come back to that nine point six. We all know how we got there. We all know we have more. So, but I think you need to hear what came out of our, our meetings. Yeah, from a planning standpoint. Then there were some outdoor athletic uh, stories that was required. Um, that was a need, that was a new one that's not even on the list. Uh, we identified just kind of uh, a scope to that and then some canopy work that needed to happen because of water infiltration. Again, some details that just came up in that last conversation. Not that it's not needed, but we wanted to put some scope to it because it wasn't even on the original list. I think the addition is what we want to bring to the attention of the board tonight. Uh, more important than the spreadsheet that a ranking originally showed. So again, we talked about this, how we get to the 9.6. Contingency-wise, that's the number that we think we're working on these plans. So on each of the individual sheets, you'll see these numbers down at the bottom category. We have the primary, we have the elementary, we have the junior high. We add those numbers up, 
we've got a total of $9.3 million utilizing a 12% contingency, which again, we have to assume that that money may be spent as we start to uncover and do more detail. It's just good planning. So it's really not extra. It's money that we need to assume will be spent. When we get into the plumbing of the school, we're going to find we need 12% more to actually fix it. That's what that money is there for. Our 9.6 that we know, so with those three packages that you have in front of you, we're at 9.3 with a 12% contingency. We have a delta difference of a plus of $300,000 over what we think our target needs to be to go out to bid with. That money right now we think is the seed money for our security film, cameras, and access controls across all those locations. That's, we're not going to accomplish everything that we want to from a security standpoint with $300,000 across all four of those. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, Greg, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh. I know how hard these things are, but I'm an ex-math teacher. I'm just trying <laughs> to make some sense of something. Mm -hmm. Up on your elementary school, yep. you have basically what's called 2.7. Yep. It's 2.6 on your diagram you showed them. And then the junior high is 4.1. So I'm seeing 200 extra thousand there that are not on the individual diagrams. And I know these things are fluid and bouncing around, but. That is very odd. So that 200,000, we can allocate that directly to the science labs? Finders keepers. Who else needs help? Did I mention troublemakers? Hang on just one second. All right, Don't sorry. steal that money yet. Hang well, on. I'm hoping it's not the other way around. Everybody get out your smartphone and your the, the primary and the high school numbers are the same as on the individuals, but the two middle guys, the elementary and junior high, are off. <laughs> That is so different. Where are these? The good news is, I'm very confident that the numbers on the sheets, individual sheets, add up correctly. All right. On the 12 percent is correct on the junior highs. Right, so that's bad. Yeah, so we're we're tuning to bit on that math. And my two mathematicians here will soon tell me. Probably fat fingers on the computer would be my guess. But okay, if I add better. these numbers, I get the 930. I think the 9308 is right. unfortunate thing because I, I, I remember that I'm not sure how these got on the slide that number is correct and it includes the 12,000 so these numbers are higher than what's on the sheets but the numbers on the sheets add to 9308040 so the sheet numbers on are correct are correct not the numbers on the sheet either. not these right. numbers but that number is correct which means yes. our delta difference of 300,000 between our target 96 and what we're spending at those three locations with the right numbers is $300,000 different. Um, I wonder if it has something to do with that 12% contingency. No, I've already added that out. Yeah, uh, I mean, so I, well, it's showing phase one cost. That is, like if you look at the primary, it says 2326 with 12% contingency, which is 25512, which you have up there. And then you add all that up and fill in another 12% contingency. Well, on top of it. 
see my question. Maybe maybe you oh, maybe slide, it, it it put your twelve no, your twelve should be five right. instead of your twelve worked in each one of those spots. Might be. That's these these still what we had correct are correct. Okay. So when we add up those four or those three okay. sheets with okay. the numbers on the sheets, it's gonna equal that nine nine three. Yeah, because if I add up those three numbers, I get nine four ninety. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So what should have been on there was the base cost. Yeah. And, and then do the twelve percent. Yeah. Right. So, so the nine three, <coughs> so the scope of work you see on those three schools, that's what we're targeting. That we think those those improvements cost. We got three hundred thousand in seed money for film, cameras, security upgrades um, across those facilities, which. We think, and we've talked about with with, with Ray, is, is there some additional funding that we can do those improvements over a period of years, you know, out of a, along with other funds, along with this money, and any contingency money that we don't use, that would be the first thing we would fund, would be our security upgrades, because that was one of the initiatives. Um, so you can see the science labs. Uh, that we'd have to drop something else to fit the science lab in. And we, this is part of the last several meetings we've had with these groups. What can we, what's the highest and best use? What do we need to accomplish across all those locations? And then I'm sh to get the best dollar we can. And we know full well that we're going to be able to deal with it. So the question that spurred mm -hmm. you guys going to the administrators mm -hmm. was how did we determine how many classrooms each building because we didn't know right because um, I've known that the primary has needed more space that's been vocalized the last couple of years but we've known the junior high <laughs> needs a lot of work um, but I I did not know exactly what the needs were of the elementary and love to hear from Kim uh, what those needs I mean what those needs are what those classrooms would be used for well, currently I have um, 12 classrooms of third grade and 11 of fourth grade. So, and my third grade classes right now are at 24, um, 23, 24. So if I would have to add another fourth grade or we would get both to 12, I have no extra classrooms at this time. Everything is full except a small OTPT, which is like a closet, um, a closet size. Mm -hmm. And that will be taken with the addition of the bathroom downstairs. <clears throat> So if I would need to add a classroom at any year, if I had you know, 12 coming up from the primary where I'd have to be 12 and 12, um, or I would have to add another classroom because of you know moving in, I wouldn't have any space to do that. So technically, I don't know that I need six, but if we would have to move, I mean, we don't have any place to put a class if I would have to add a class. So, and I know for many years, intermediate's been at 12 and 12, and primary has some, but I don't know, I couldn't do my research on that, but. Um, what do the numbers look like no. primary right now as far as? Okay, but the, when you're moving the counselors to the front office, does that not free up one classroom space for your counselors? Or they're what not going to the front there? office, they're staying in that. They're staying in the room they're in. Mm -hmm. Because they're all grouped together now and need more space themselves, and the nurses area needs to be increased as well. Well, I tell you what. For some odd reason, you knew that you'd probably ask what the moment are going to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, so John, using his four, Forecast 5 analytical software, uh, has drawn up some enrollment trends, historical uh, birth rate, live birth rate, how much you know, how many births have happened over the past several years, and when can we expect those kids to come to school. And I think we think uh, 2020 has seen a little uptick in enrollment. Uh, but you can see here, compared to historical enrollment from 2010 to 2016 on the first page. Um, so you can kind of see we're not really where we were. And you can see the overall uh, differential there of total enrollment K-12 in 2010 was 36.39 compared to currently 34.59. And as you turn the next page, you will see uh, enrollment projections. Uh, and in, uh, like I said, we get to 2020, you see a spike here and there, like for the eighth grade class. Um, it has, when a class bubbles, that bubble bu pretty well falls all the way through until those kids graduate. Uh, page number, what is that, four? One, two, page three. Uh, you'll see our total, total K-12 enrollment in a, kind of a chart. 
using live birth data, you see a continual downward trend um, as you go from 2010 all the way to 2021. 2010, we had 3,639 kids and we're projected to have 3,317. Now, again, that doesn't take into account those that move in. You know, we're just looking at projections based upon live birth rate. Uh, next page is total enrollment, staff to student ratio, and kind of where we are as a district. You see the, those percentages, um, how, how we fluctuate based upon the total number of staff that we have. Um, and then we've also included uh, our core data membership counts, the numbers that we take historically from 03, 04, all the way up to 15, 16. So you can see uh, you have uh, 733. Uh, to 728 respectively that's September October <clears throat> count and then you have your February count membership two count 743 and 744 so you see that depending upon the year there's some fluctuations in the flow of the district but from what we've seen we're not seeing huge enrollment influx we see maintaining if not dipping and that's one of the things that we talked about and one of the goals that I've had as superintendent is I'd love to see them. We struggle at the kindergarten level because we have kids that come in that don't have kindergarten residents readiness skills. We've got to do something to introduce some type of pre-kindergarten, early intervention, early education programs for our kids. Um, and I still strongly support that in our district, but that's going to take classroom space. Um, as far as with Dr. Tooley saying, I agree, she might need one, and as she said, maybe two classrooms, but she doesn't know she's going to need six. So there's three classrooms on the top, and I know that Greg and Roy will tell you that that doesn't necessarily equate you to divide it in, in thirds and cut it, because once it's here, it's cheaper to build it when they're on site than the cost of just mobilization to start construction. But yeah, we, we had PTOT because we were just we were real good to get the additional restroom we need, STEM lab, uh, one additional sped class, and then a future third and fourth grade class. So that we got to four or five, and then the shape of the building mandated building out, you know, just what we needed to try and keep that addition as small as possible and efficient on two stories. So if you do not have that addition, does that affect any of these other numbers? If we if we did not build that? If we did not have the addition, does that affect any of these other? We probably, instead of, um, uh, finishing one of the restrooms we have to go into the lower floor because we won't be adding the one but keep the PTOT in the small area they're in now we have to upgrade one of the other restrooms from a finish to an ADA compliant that number would go up you know uh, but nothing in the magnitude of the million two you know that's for that construction I guess I I know all the administrators know how much respect them all and there's we're trying to figure out what's best for the kids. But I see um, a future use if enrollment goes up compared to um, our junior high kids first first time in a real science class and we can't even boil water or whatever. And we're trying to get people excited in STEM, yet we have nothing for them to get excited about. Um, that age and then I didn't know we had teachers teachers on carts so I'm looking at those two things compared to the and if come <coughs> you can take oil and water in the sun they'd use electric hot plates rather than the buns and burners Yeah. <laughs> takes about 15 minutes. Well, yeah, not so get an induction <laughs> well. so there's, there's a lot of work that needs to have in the science lab. There's no doubt. You know, bring those up to where we want. And that's why the number you know, has increased. There's also some, uh, there could be some structural issues we need to deal with in the back of that building you know, at that point. Uh, as long as we're putting investment into those rooms. And that's not under because if you wait until you did that upgrade to spend that money as well. See, when I got on the board and I found out about the eight properties that we own, 
and I talked to Butch Smith um, about that. And he said there was twofold reasons why they bought that property. One is um, growth, but the second was that that junior high building at that time they've been told was either going to need to be knocked down or used for storage. And was that 15, 17 years? And there really oh, wow. hasn't been done much, much done to it. Are you sure you're at the right building? Wasn't it the old junior high? Which is now where the intermediate was? Because that's what they had moved out of. That's the one I got moved out of. Because that used to be the senior high, and we had, they moved to the junior, that became junior high, and the old junior high was vacated, it was mm -hmm. empty, but then when the intermediate had some header issues, we had fifth and sixth grade move over there, but that was kind of around... 2004. Is that right? Well, that's what, I mean, 2003, 2004 is when we moved, well, actually 2001 is when we moved because that over to the other building that because that's when I was pregnant with Kaylee. Which is now the intermediate was going to be storage. Right. I had to it move. Was we got really bad. Right. <laughs> that's the way I understood it. Well, but I'm just, I could, well, I could well, you know, wrong. term as far as junior high versus I think it's a little extreme high. to say the junior high building needs to be turned into storage. You know, for it, the I current mean, one, the current, the current one. yeah. I mean, that, I the old one was, right? Yeah, because it was empty, and then we got. To I mean, there's it. definite <laughs> deficiencies that you know we're addressing. Yeah. With, you know, I'm not, not debating. I'm just saying. I think I think you can Four, still get some two. use out of that. Obviously, a new junior high would be wonderful. Um, but that's a lot more. Oh yeah. Thirty million dollars. You know, so. and, and here's my thoughts on this. When I when I sat down and talked with Heath, and actually, you know, Ray Kelly and I sat down with, with the five administrators and said, Hey, you know what? What was your takeaway from the meetings? What do you see your immediate need? And that's when Kim said, Hey, you know, I, I could use two or three, but I don't necessarily have to have six. And uh, Dr. Wallace said, Well, you know, I I, I shaved a few off mine to try to help other people out. And we know Heath need that. But but, but here's here's my thought, and and ultimately. <coughs> If you're going to do it, we need to do it right. And why do we want to halfway do I know we can't afford new lockers. I know he would love to have those. I know we can't uh, afford new veneers and new, new you know, painting throughout. But I do worry about at least the back wall of that building. Um, I know Ray's been monitoring that since I've been here. This is my fifth year. The wall, yes, has not moved. On the junior yeah. high, the back wall, the science oh, lab. Yeah, uh, we filled it, and we had those. I don't know, not GSI, Ray. Right? What was the company that monitored? You remember? Uh, well, we had two companies. One was Hillsboro Land and Survey Company. They do the, the hillside. Make sure to make sure there's not moving. Uh -huh. And then we had um, company put little yeah. dials on the wall. To make yeah, sure that's that, the um, right on the department. Department. Yeah, yeah, to make sure that that, that wall wasn't shifting, but. You still have a wall that's cracking. That's my thought. You're going to do all of this. You still have a wall to crack it. Um, it's kind of like a car. You can put new tires and a new paint job. You're going to fix the rust. You just still have a rusty car. Do all of what you need if they would to do the science I, I, I agree with what Rob's saying. But for me, the huge concern is we need to fix you know, the cracks in the floor. And I, I know Ray and his team's worked on that. We filled it in, but you know. And this is the same building, the radar. That's correct. Yeah. 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 So, so you're saying, why would we spend money on remodeling this? No, I just want to do it right. And right. I think that's when Heath sat in my office, that was, and I don't want to speak for Heath, but that's the, the feeling I got. Hey, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Um, let's, let's take care of the building. And one of the great pluses, I know that Heath and I talked about, was moving all the kids in. And there was an original thought that we weren't going to have that addition there on the, and Heath was really concerned about that. Um, Which addition? The, number two, the gym? Number yeah. two. Yeah. When we first started our process, that junior high addition for the gym wasn't able to be included based on the, based on the numbers because we had the primary and the elementary with a couple more classrooms and stuff that they in our original concept. Off. So then as we talked to him, we understood, we understood that well, we could, but by the time we got through the elementary and the primary meetings with them, 
they were able to give up some of the classrooms we had already in the plans, which made the numbers fluctuate more to allow us to bring that back into play. And when you said 500,000 for the labs, that's a complete gut job on just the labs, right? Mm -hmm. That's not tearing it to and find, hey, that wall's messed up. Oh, that is too. That's not yeah. accounting for that, right? So we know that that's probably going to be an issue. So that 500,000 could easily. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend 100,000 on those science labs without fixing yeah. what you're talking about. It's, that's what I'm saying. We, right now, that's not even in the, wasn't in the math. You know, again, we could run multiple scenarios because those are just as needed. I could argue those science labs are more important than moving the administration having a secure vestibule. I mean, there's there's a lot of really important needs, you know, with it, but we're being consistent across the board to what we're doing because that's kind of how this was advertised. How we got to make some accomplishments in areas, but I wouldn't invest a dollar in the science labs without fixing that whole situation. You know, with it, so which yes may drive the co cost of those labs up. Doesn't mean the labs; it just be a problem in the building where we're going to be investing money. But when you say that, though, we know for sure that it's structurally sound, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Right. There's two. Okay. Sorry. I mean, they're they're monitoring that stuff right now. Again, yeah. it hasn't moved. It is structurally sound. Other groups have analyzed that it's not a collapse situation. Okay. You know, before we ever got here, that had all been studied. It was like that's not a or that obviously in any life safety thing like that would. We wouldn't be talking about something else. So, but I agree totally with Doc that we wouldn't invest in that interior and leave the shell, you know, crumbling. And you know, we'd have to fix that first. How much additional money could be generated if the additions went from three to six, or from six to three at the elementary? Yeah, the two oh, one story. You just have a one story on the bottom instead of a few. You know, I, I, I wouldn't tell you right now that it's half because we've got all the foundation work, we've got the system work that would have to go, you know, for that. And there's really some benefit to the systems covering two as far as the ones, you know. Uh, but we, we wouldn't have to put the stair in, you know, at this point. That could be a future we want to build for that. Um, I guess the question would be, do you want to frame that building out so that the second story could be added? Um, we're looking for probably a million dollars, you know, with it. Can I build the three classrooms for the 281, 150 left after no? Probably not. But that's making some headway. It's just questions we would ask you because you don't want to come back later and add the second floor and have to tear up the first. Um, we've shelled second floors, build the wall on the roof and leave it vacant. Say it's all the interior things, but we're not going to generate the Money we need to add to the 9.3 to pull, you know, say the labs in, you know, with it. But that that certainly is a you know way to start getting there. There's no doubt. Um, well, and my concern is, I know that the um, science labs were was included in the sales pitch yeah, for well, sale in, the in the presentation that we had during the bond issue, we had always put out there that guys, we have 18 to $20 million right, worth right. of stuff we can do. We're gonna have a set amount and we'll pick out of that 18 to 20 million the best that we can. And it was in the mix, but yeah. right. And again, I'm first, I feel we were very clear and upfront and transparent about that from day one, about not just us, I mean all of them, you know, to the public. That, this was going to be the day there would be decisions that have to be made. You know, with it. Um, there's a lot being accomplished you know, with, with the 9.3 you know, that's going into it. But certainly, we, we knew the science labs that was going to be one. That's why we kind of worked so hard to get that field house back in there so we could bring all the kids back. And it's another thing. You know, and we just ran out of flex space with the, with the dollars that were available to it. To, Make the equation. We've been working backwards since day one. But what can we fit into that bucket for that amount? You know, what's the best way? Is it four science labs? Yeah. The the two seventh though are not near as needy yeah, as the two eight, but they, it is four different rooms. Okay. Dr. Corman. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Some clarification on the enrollment thing. Just to mm -hmm. that's you look at all those graphs and you're like, how does this read? Right now, I went and looked at the attendance today from the, in the kindergarten, 234 kids. I was sitting in the chair this morning. Last year, looking at our forecast five, our first grade class was 204 students. 
second grade 228. That third grade that Dr. Tuley spoke of is a bubble class of 271. And that's why we added that third grade teacher who will go to fourth grade next year, same class. Um, fourth grade is at 249, fifth grade 240. The sixth grade is also a large bubble class of 288 last year. That moves out. So, but overall, where we're trending down in the near future is when we talk about immediate needs, that's, just, that's what that looks like in the next two or three years at the elementary small class is going to be. Now we could have a, a bubble year and we, I foresee that in the future because the kids in there right now, if you think about the economy, the financials, the lower birth rates due to 2008, if you run out the years, 2009, those students are eight years old. You know, as the economy is going, individuals stop having children, now that going forward as it kind of comes back. But in our short term, and then it's three or four years. Keith, is there a way to take, equip maybe two of the labs and they alternate usage of them? You know, seventh grade gets it for these few weeks and then they flip flop and eighth grade uses, you know, it's possible they would just have to switch rooms for the day. Right, or the, or like I said, by the week, depending on what the activities. Yes, you know. for whatever they would need, they would have to switch. They just wouldn't be able to use, and they would have to do the higher upgrade, eighth grade. Eighth grade has different, with a different curriculum, they would also need gas. Um, I don't know, I haven't talked right. to these guys about other codes, but they might need a, like an emergency shower. Mm -hmm. um, they might need a, uh, a hood. Yeah. That the seventh grade would not need because they wouldn't be burning anything at all. They would just simply have sinks and electric and items that are much what, more basic. What's the difference between a cost-wise private classroom and regular classroom in terms of the cost per square foot? Probably fifty dollars a square foot. Because right now we're talking about gutting existing classrooms. We're also adding on ten, whatever that was, six, seven. seven so. Would we would we be able to make would we be able to make those new classrooms science classrooms and change and just use the, the current science classrooms as your standard ed classes? It it will increase the square footage of the addition because they're bigger bigger ones. Okay. So the offset, you know, that larger expansion space and the cost for that versus dollar wise, you know, might not won't be a won't be a, a cost savings. What other I'm not gonna talk about this as a hope element because we're dealing with a construction market that's climbing, you know, right now. And is this is a a, a, a good packaged item to put out as an alternate is if we bid out, you know, in the packages we need to talk about what are the next you know packages to bid out and we get those large enough, um, they're they're you know with some competitive bidding we do have a uh, chance that maybe the numbers will come in slightly under and we can pick up an alternate, an add alternate of rooms that's competitively bid at the same time. We all just have to be aware that that's one way we package like the science rooms so we get competitive numbers and then when those real numbers come in we can make those snap decisions about we've got the money, pull the trigger on the alternate, bring in let's do it. Or we don't have it, we try, we will at least now we have competitive numbers. It's another way of you know waiting and not, not being reactive after the numbers come in, you save some dollars and go, well let's start a design process for the for the labs. Costs keep going up and you know so we, we can package something like that, you know, uh, in this initial package to take advantage of that. Um, so basically what you shared with us, the alternates to add on will be the science labs in the high school. Because the high school is not in this number. Yeah, I don't think the high school at $2 million or the one point, you know, at least for the addition, you know, where we've got, you know, one six. I, I'm talking about that across $9 million, if you have a, you know, a 5% variance and from our estimates right now, a very early stage with contingency to hard plans, competitive market, bidding the actual plans that you might see a 5% reduction in the $9 million number where you can pick up a $400,000, $500,000 
left. Not a this so, is a variance. So the high school, we aren't even really. Now, I, I, I think we put that out there just because that need came. You asked us to do that. That is a, a real need. It's always been on the list, you know, uh, expansion. Just was voiced as you had to make a decision. It's real. <laughs> Not doing something at another location major to be able to get the high school major. Right. Which I guess that's the concern that, you know, didn't know that even though I was aware there were some parts, etc. Yeah. Well, that, this discussion kind of put into clarity what would have to happen to solve some of that and give you now a value to put with that to keep in the back of your mind as you move forward with other funding mechanisms as we've talked all along. That would be a primary one to be the next one at the top of the list. And then we'd recirculate, as we mentioned, all the other ones that were on the list and there's new ones being added as buildings get older. Let's reprioritize at that point, which is exactly the process we're going through here. At some point, you just have to, because of the funding that's there, it's, uh, you know, it's not like we're going to, next time if we put a package together and say, we want to do this public, here's the value of that. Will you support it? This was a little bit different. We said, we think we're, we're going to go with this mechanism. It'll leave this much for us. Now, what can we do? from it. It's just a different way, totally acceptable, just a different way of doing it. Yes, but it would not be the point for at least two or three years. Well, but you might I know. Have one. But we're not going to have all this done. The question was, what about savings from Highway A? What, how would we reallocate that? And, you know, we, we spent $150,000 annually, but we, you know, figured we are going to pay half a year. So at 75000 we might be able to reallocate towards something. Um, but again, that, well, that's something we could look at. Right. So that's filming and cameras on a yearly basis that can be added to each and over the next three years. You can complete, complete that story as we're completing, you know, this work. From a from a cost standpoint of doing three other rooms at the elementary, let's just say we do the lower floor. I think it brings back in the science labs much more in reality to save that money from that addition. And it's I think much more realistic to say we built three of those six rooms and we saved those dollars, which isn't half of it, that you could more safely say with our contingencies and you know what we've got we have a, a much better shot at getting that in the bids when they all came in of accomplishing it. We have to <coughs> sacrifice something of substance to say we can add a half million dollars to the number. You know, so I think that kind of gets you a, a little of both. You know, with it. Um, I, I, I feel confident that we could put that in definitely an alternate package and have a much better chance of it without sacrificing something, I think we're just hoping that the numbers come in less and right now the numbers aren't declining, they're increasing. So if we had, I mean, that three classrooms, if we had to add another, was it fourth grade that we were short one or third grade? We're going to need to move whoever's in third grade this year, one of them up to fourth grade. And, but we've done that every year. I don't know, the past two or three years I've been here, right, John? We, oh, we had a fourth grade going back to third. And then you're going to fourth. You know, you know, three classes. Yes, we have a allows us to add the extra yeah. bathroom that we need. We accomplish that. We get the PTO, we get the STEM lab. You know, we get the, you know, we're getting uh, the STEM room. We get all three of those. Get those, you know, it allows us to do some of that repurposing that we talked about. We just don't have the extra space. And then the students would need to benefit mm -hmm. with the site. So as far as the foundation, are you thinking of being like peers or something? That will determine, hopefully not. Right. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we, we haven't done soils reports or surveys yet either. So I mean, so there's still some unknowns. When Greg talks about that 12% contingency, that would be if we had bad soils, we'd have to know that we'd go through a remediation. You know, but uh, right now we're hoping for spread footings, and if we need to oversize those some for a future second floor addition, knowing that going forward we can certainly account for that. 
but uh, like, like Greg said, if it's not a half the cost, it's probably you know, half plus another percentage or two more. And, and we've talked for you know, a long time about these buildings, um, everything we're doing is adding on to existing. And that is more difficult for contractors, more time consuming, more phasing. So that's why I'm reluctant to say, well, let's just eliminate some buffer because it's real. Yeah. It really is there. Um, it's not anybody's fault, it's just the fact that that's what we're adding on to. So. Uh, I know I don't get a vote in this, but um, as I'm sitting there imagining how I wrap my mind around this, we keep talking about student enrollment and projections and thinking years down the road, but I haven't heard any, do we have any kind of projections on when that next bond issue could happen and what volume that could be? It's like if I'm going to take a second mortgage on my house, I need to know when my car is paid off. I, I've got to think down the road and I, I know. And when the kids need to go to college. Yes. Uh, I think so, it's around 2022. 2022, Kelly, I see you nodding your head. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking of right around there. Because just because you pay bonds off doesn't yeah. mean you go, you're not going to go borrow a million. Oh, I understand. It's not helping you. We talk about that where we would put them on that list of next projects, but or is that is that feasible next year, five years from now, 10, ten years? Because as we're talking about growth coming through, that, that's going to affect everybody. Mm -hmm. And you can try to forecast that, but if we know it, we had a huge class starting kindergarten this year, we would want to plan for that growth at the elementary three years from now. That makes sense. Sorry, Kelly. I should ask you that before I ask you. I mean, that would be sooner than seven years. I mean, it's been seven years since we did our last one. Classroom. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so this is just a kind of a recap of, you know, again, accomplishments that you're making. You know, we're in the four categories that we originally had the bond issue, the learning and wellness. We're adding new classrooms and those different topics. Um, uh, the weight and fitness uh, facility, the bleacher installation, which is, you know, that's a project that's, that's going. You know, it's, it's, we're already working the nursing facilities, all were in those categories that we advertised. The code compliance, the ADA restrooms, the teacher's resource room, we're making ADA code compliance modifications, the safety and security of the secure vestibules, with the administrative suites, and then the eventual access control cameras, all in the plan and then our, um, along with that is some intercom and bell system work that needs to happen in our HVAC upgrades in the gym. Just trying to show you guys that, you know, with where we were, a year ago for the bond and telling people what we're going to try to accomplish. We have the categories, we have the list, and then we have the priorities. We are, in fact, you could directly relate it back to what you told them you were going to do with the money that they were approving. It's a very direct correlation back to it. It's not everything, but we told them it wasn't going to be everything, that we were prioritizing these lists and then we would keep those needs and reprioritize in five, seven years when the next funding mechanism came about. So I think the message has been very clear and very consistent. We'd love to do more. Everyone. So that was my, that's really the last, last slide. My, my thoughts are we go to the three classrooms and then add the science labs and the um, resource officer vestibule at the high school. And for the city. Okay. So it'd be like a little mini police station at the front door. Yeah. I mean, you figure, on it. you figure right now he sits in the office. Yeah. So people had already, they're already, in, the they're already in the building yes. before he even, yes. he, and just he speaking about, them, about it, that seemed to be a, a good, a good move based on the, on the planning that we have. You know, we get some larger monitors because they have trouble seeing what's going on, we increase that, and then uh, that was a good, uh, way the way the building is designed currently you know, increase the security improvement. I think the package you just mentioned, I mean it's 
again, that's what tonight is for to kind of show you all the culmination of you know, what we need to do and then make, make a couple of decisions like that and still be good stewards of the money. It's all got to fit into that, that framework. But if you add the science, since you're talking about adding them into the junior high new construction, right? We can look at both scenarios and I think come up with the most economical way of doing that um, to see how that works. I mean, Heath, do you think that would, I mean, is that really what your vision would be too? I mean, is that a big, I mean, I, I totally love science and I I just know that in high school and we didn't have science lab <laughs> yet, we were okay. Um, so I just, is that, if they did that with your school, would it be addressing the focus that you guys have? I mean, would it lose too much when we, because you're going to lose six classrooms or seven, you're going to turn them into, what, four? Would that? Oh, I'm sorry. So what they're talking about, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but what, yeah, I think I what Rob's suggesting is instead of changing the science labs that are there, but if the seven new constructions would be turned into like four, well, what no, he's, he's saying is that no, no, I'm just, I just said redo. Oh, redo. Yeah, instead of this is kind of about the rooms where it says only six at the elementary, only three. Oh, I, I take know. Take that extra funding and, uh, and redo the science labs here. But but when you say redo the science labs, you're talking you're talking about addressing the ones that are there. Correct. But you know that's going to be. I mean, you already said that's going to be like a structural nightmare, right? That's no, going to no, require a lot we, more. If we not because there's science labs because the building right. already needs attention that we wouldn't invest in that fixing the wall until we made the investment in that area. Yeah. That's, what I'm saying. So that's what you're saying yes. that you would do. You would you have to fix the, fix the wall and, okay. and redo the science rooms in place because right now you've got the square footage there that works for them. Oh, I mean, that sounds great. Yes, I thought you were saying um, the change the existing no, 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 new construction right into science labs that never touched for you. That, 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 that was those classes. Yeah, it was mixed. We'd have to, that would increase the square footage of the new building because science Science rooms are larger. Bigger, right. So we our dollars for that would go up on our chart. You relocate the classrooms that we're going to be in in the seven, and you'd move four. You have four of them in there. You'd still have to have three because they need the seven rooms. Right. And they'd be in bigger rooms, and they need. And we'd still have to fix the wall right. and upgrade yeah. the rooms. Right. Right. No. So the delta. This is difference. much better than what I thought you yeah. were saying. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to fit really fix. I just right. when you said earlier how much trouble that's going to be. I was afraid, I mean, that's no. going to be a lot more money than what you're... No. I think they're saying how much no. trouble could possibly be. Yeah, okay. it falls into what Doc was saying. If we're going to go in there and put these... We're going to fix those problems, regardless of a big science lab. It's it similar to the restroom yeah. at the elementary. When we go in and we renovate those, we're going to fix the plumbing regardless. Right. right. Yeah, but what and needs to be mentioned in is these, in these numbers, though. Even I mean, we're not going to get way high off of our budget when you go into. I'm just worried that the science lab, what you're all bringing up, is that it's going to be, you know, for you to really fix it. Is it going to be out of our budget here? Well, I think that I am, but addressing <laughs> addressing, you know, this with what the information we have tonight mm -hmm. is to have a chance at accomplishing those science rooms the way they need to be we needed to make a sacrifice someplace else, or I wouldn't even have to have the conversation with you. I, then somebody write a check, because we don't know where you're gonna get the money from. We're not saying you don't need it or want it or desire it. We'd love to do $20 million. Now we've, we've, we've found a way to populate the money side by not building something else. Now we have to go back and look at the value of what's those three classrooms gonna be that we're not building. So we're gonna build the foundation so it's not half of it. But it certainly pulls us a lot closer to being able to now investigate what that overall cost is going to be. So you haven't invested. What I guess was not, so we don't really know what that's going to cost. Well, I, okay. the half million dollars that I gave, I gave was for gutting those rooms and putting them back into place. We'd have to add to that what we think is going to be to fix the wall. Okay. Which, so that could be. We just don't know. Okay. Yeah, but I. I it's not going to be. Like a big no, no, I, not too bad. I don't okay. think so. It, yeah. I don't know. Keep in mind that all of it's big money. Right. $10,000 is a lot of money. But I'm hoping that the magnitude of what you guys have available to spend, that the contracting market is going to look on that favorably. If we were doing these as one-offs, we don't have a chance. In fact, they're going to add money to it. What I'm hoping we get 
is when we bid these out, that somebody's going to be able to look at at least by school and go, I've got multiple projects, multiple things I can face, so I get a lot of, a lot of efficiency out of my general conditions, out of my supervision, and I can go in there while it's difficult. I can, I can, I've really got enough of a piece to work with. Um, and if a contractor should get two of the schools, he's, he's looking to spreading those general costs, which is really a, a big number, you know, with this. Um, so there is some synergy to that that I think we're not telling you there's a rainbow here. You know, I'm not, I'm, I haven't been telling you that the whole time I've been working with you. It's, it's real numbers, and I don't control the final ones. I'm trying to guess what those are. But that has, we have seen that help reduce numbers in the past, the larger that initial bid package is. And then we want to put those dollars right back into something. Mm -hmm. so. so I would like to see Mr. Allison come up with some alternative plans. If we can't have all four, how, what are we going to do? And what's, what are we going to really use? in those labs? Do we need bumps and burners for all those rooms? You know, what types of things well, we really need? And then I'd like to know from Dr. Tooley, who, yep. I don't know where she is, but she's in the bathroom. But I want to know what her rooms were really going to be used for. You know, how much is she going to be hurting by giving up those three? Well, she did say she didn't necessarily need six, right? That's right. She well, said but, but okay. what are they going to be used for right now, right. you know? I know he said something about a STEM lab for them too. So they need to have their science facility just like the junior high and the intermediate and all those other places need. You know, they were just gonna have one room for that. Well, one, oh, one was STEM lab, one was OPPT. She had two for future growth for third and fourth grade. But well, I don't well, remember one what grade the other short. two were. There was a teacher workroom. Teacher workroom. So the two future grade and the teacher work room are the three that I would say we'd go back and just review again. Again, that's why you know, we want this format tonight. To go back and review to make sure we're not making a critical error by finding that. And then we need to do a little more investigation. I'll tell you, Heath has done a great job of identifying need in each of the science rooms. He got that to us just a couple of days ago. And so we would start with that well, and so we'd we go investigate. I yeah. just got it and I don't want to show you anything that I haven't had a chance to look at. And it was an email that he sent you yeah. today. Wasn't yeah. It? And we're going to be gathering information, doing layouts, making things adjust, turning things, okay. and making it work before you really see it. I mean, yeah. I mean that, so we can get a little more detail there. But in general, as the overall picture, you know, as we have the last couple of months, I think we're, we're at a point that if that's a direction, we want to verify you know, the free classroom production, look at how much that reduces those costs, right. analyze the science loop, but see how that helps Change. each other. Okay. But if that's a direction, I really feel like that's going to get us close enough that we can put that in the package. And as we refine from here forward, which has got a lot of work to do, we need to look for other ways that we can not to not do it right, but be good with the money we're spending, you know, with it. Um, I have a, a two two questions. One, one of the things he brought up from his science teachers was the radon concern. They want the radon gone, and uh, I know St. Louis radon come down. We still have radon detectors in there, um, and mitigated the radon the way that you're supposed to. So, I, maybe a point of clarification about getting radon gone. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to give you the technical answer of making it gone because. I'm not it, sure in our experience that's an exact science. It's, it's an evacuation process right. of the of the gases that would be a continuous ongoing thing Through until the Mother the Nature the says it's I will just a break down and decay of the Yes. But across the industry, the system that you have in there right now is what you do when you have radon. You evacuate it and then you're totally fine to be in the space. So but to say, how are we going to pay money to fix it? That isn't going to be the case. Now, when we fix the problem, we certainly are going to leave the ability to continue to evacuate the radon gas that may be coming up. For yeah, the, and once we get into the details of, of that particular portion of the project, we'll revisit those issues and we'll make sure that it is being done per today's. With an environmental standard. engineer right. who's going to tell us so if there's any other ways we can do it cheaper or better, but still create. You know, the safe environment. 
Because technology on that has changed from when you put those detectors in, even how that's being done. Uh, the, ne the next question, uh, what are they? Three years old, right? Yeah. Those detectors are two, two or three years old. Wow, sorry. Next question is, uh, part of the discussion we've had several times was, um, I know with Ray in, in our meetings and with the facilities committee when we've met, had discussions was when we were rolling out in our projected go time for sitting everything out, getting construction documents ready, getting all the blueprints up, what it's downloading the bids or Steve bids. And that discussion in my mind was revolving around that spring 2018 build. And by that, it was the things that aren't going to interrupt instruction such as at the end of Heath's building or at the end of primary building. I see, you know, Kim's might have to wait till summer, but there are some things we could do in the spring, but in our conversation, you know, a couple of days ago today was we're looking at summer 2018. Talk to me about, before we ever break ground, talk to me about why that's being pushed back or what's, is there any delays? What can the board do? Because I know from our perspective, we would like, Heath would love to be able to get in those rooms at the start of the 18-19 school year, but if we don't start building until July, August 2018, he's not going to get to use those rooms. So talk to me about time frame, with what's in your mind, Greg, Roy, what are your thoughts? Well, we're at September 15th, we're at the middle of September, that's where we're at. We're discussing what you want to do, okay, and, and we're fully prepared to implement these next steps of plans immediately now. In fact, some of the last couple of months, we've been not just verifying what you're doing, but doing some tentative layouts of some of those additions too, because that's the next level of detail. We've kind of verified the need, now we need to you know, start looking at the planning of it, like we're gonna do with the science labs. That's that next level that we want to get into. But we're at September 15th. Um, the last thing we're gonna do is rush through these detailed, messy additions to hurry. We've missed the spring window by a couple of months here, which is from the June to now September of us getting, making sure we're making the right steps. I'm not faulting anybody. I think it's a, it's a step we, we, we need to take. It's a, it's a big step for us. But now our job is to package these things. And I think our next window, except for the bleachers and HVAC and the electrical upgrade that we're, we've been talking about now, which is underway, we think that work might be able to get going in the spring um, with it. One of the things for the HVAC that we've been kind of lagging on is the, the fitness room that we just were able to get back into the picture. If that's in the picture, it may be a better situation for us to upgrade the size of the unit on the existing gymnasium to serve that as opposed to not. So to make that determination, we need to know if it's going or not. So there's been a little delay on we need we need the total picture to make the good decisions. I don't want to be spending money just because we picked up a month. I don't think that's being good stewards, you know. Of it. So implementing our I think our next goal would be to if if you gave us direction tonight to all right, we think we think verify, take the three classrooms off and verify the cost of the science, but as far as the rest of the direction, let's do a critical path schedule and move forward. We would start to separate those items into what can be under construction next summer. Because that's your next window to not interrupt school. So what of these renovations can we package, get out of the street, get bid, get back, get mobilized, and start construction May 15th of 2018 to be done by August 15th, 2018. A normal summer schedule to size projects. Package that. At the same time, the, these other larger additions are going to take us longer to design and draw than those those will. We've got to come up with a time frame where we can bid those out in the right package. Get that magnitude that I'm talking about you know, with it so that you get the better pricing because of it. And then that will be the ones that aren't dis disrupting school as much because they're exterior renovations. But the, all the front door work that has to happen, those additions, that's going to be where we're they're going to be fall somewhere right in the middle. So I think, Doc, it's going to be multiple packages. But what I want to look at once we get that, this is what we're doing. How do we package it? It may take longer to get into it, but you may save a half million dollars by bundling. 
that's a decision I think you need to make. If we think there's a real value versus let's piece these out so we get in here. I know it's a tough decision, but we're tight on dollars. And I'd like to have that opportunity to come back to you and show that for a <coughs> schedule. Once you say, I think you're 95% you're there, go through a couple of these things, we'll start to put that in those packages. But summer of 2018 is gonna be the first time that we're building substantial elements of this, and they have to be able to be completed in that, that window. So it limits what can be done. But there's things definitely within here that can happen. Now when you're saying summer, you, you're talking May, not right. yeah. July. Buses leave, the contractor's on board, he's moving. So May, they will swing hammers. We have to work back from that for permits, bidding, contracts, mobilization, ordering of materials. So they're ready and they're actually waiting outside the door when they leave and they take over the next day and start ripping things out. And in some cases, you can start a little bit earlier depending on the areas that are gonna be working with. You know, maybe a week early or two weeks early, but you'll have your permits ready. And then you guys, you gotta be done August 1st so that you do a punch list, you can fit it, move in and be ready for school to start because we don't want you operating. And there again, in some areas, can they hang over a couple of weeks in the school? Sure, they're painting, they're putting base down or not. It's not dangerous atmosphere. So we understand those windows, but we've got to put the right factors together. And with three or four locations, we want to just put those in groups of similar work. So a contractor can come in and do one or two can come in and do that work. They'll give you better pricing for that. Um, summer work is not cheap because it's usually small projects and it's short durations, and they know it's short durations. But if they know we've got bigger projects coming, and we can tie. You know, so that they get, I think we'll get better pricing for it. So I know the timing's critical. I understand, it. but I also know how critical the money is. You know, with it, and I'm putting the money over the time right now. If, you, if you're asking me that question, so I, I will, once I get direction tonight, we'll go back, and that'll be the first thing we do. We'll try and put those in packages and come back but in a month to your next meeting. Say. Here's what we think the durations are going to be, so you'll understand the timing. Right. Board's meeting in two weeks. I was going to Pardon? say, that was my question, too. In two weeks, we have another meeting. Can you have the money aspect for this possibility of change? Yes. By then? Yes. Okay. Because we, then the board can take action at right. that time. Because we have that, and you will know, too. Because mm -hmm. we're right with you. We don't want to go over right. money. No. I, I, so just to be clear with the board, what I'll come back with is we're going to study those two elements of this plan that we presented tonight. The reduction of classrooms at the elementary confirmed and um, get team buy-off. We'll put some dollar reductions to that when we think that's going to be. A little bit of work on the science labs, looking at the wall, getting a, a, what we think our estimate, just like any of these other line item costs. We'll look at the delta difference and say, we think we're in the target range, let's go ahead with that, or we still haven't given enough someplace else. You know, okay. The other question I had, I was under the impression that the junior high bleachers were gonna be able to be done over the Christmas break. Correct, yeah, we had that conversation. We did. And, and, and so is that a nix, because you didn't, yeah. you said nix. Yeah, that, that right now, there's there's two long lead items on products right now, and, and getting in there to get the mechanical system and stuff completed, so that that has gone to a uh, later springtime. Not that yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah. You're saying the HVAC is holding up the picture? We're trying to get that whole package together, as so we have one contractor go in there, disrupt, put it all back together, and then move out. And so that was well, the way we approached that package was to create the HVAC, the electrical upgrades, and the bleachers all in one package to be able to go in and get that taken care of. All I, in I understand, package. I just wish we could know, I know Mr. Allison's already made promises to a lot of parents. To Sorry. Get any bleachers in here. It's all going to fall down. Which I thought that was happening, so. I did too. I, uh, well, we, in, in, trying again to make sure that we're packaging this stuff correctly and designing it. Um, the engineer had a request, he said, look, if you're gonna build that other building, if we upsize the unit on the roof, which changes the structure, which changes the unit size, which changes, 
We can duct over to that building. And you don't have to have additional rooftop units over there to maintain and use. It seemed to make a lot of sense. And he goes, so should I do that? He's like, I don't know. Uh, and are you telling me it's significant? It, it could be. Lonely at the top time, Greg said, I've got to get better direction on this, you know, to make that decision. Because or I'll be sitting here and you'll go, you're telling me we could have saved sixty-five thousand dollars or hundred and sixty five on a unit if we'd have done it together? And go, yeah, but you're in quicker. Yeah. I it, it is it's a double edged sword for us sometimes. So I made that decision myself. I think it's the right one. And I right now, I'm not gonna come back in two weeks and you're gonna tell me not to do that building. That's not what you're not going to tell me to do. I'm going to make that guess. And we're going to go ahead and proceed with, that's the way we should be looking at that HVAC. Mm -hmm. And it's gone from 7,500 square feet to 6,000 because they've made some sacrifices. We've convinced some things and I've got a smaller building that we can afford. So a lot of that's on the good side of this. Yep, it won't be ready for Christmas. Well, and that's, you know. Yeah, I understand. I understand. That was my question. What I, I thought. What I want you guys to understand is it's not a lack of caring. Right. It's a lot of moving parts. And in fact, if we didn't care, it'd be end by Christmas right. and you'd, you'd, you'd get what you get. I totally I understand. Just trying to I make, totally understand yeah. what you're saying. All I'm going to ask is if something like that's going to come up and change. I mean, we've got a school that was possibly already planning to change activities over the Christmas break or right. this or that. And now we're just finding out that it's not happening. I understand. Um, you know, we have more, we're going to be more often, obviously, yeah. you know, because there's going to be a lot of things moving forward once we get to yeah. go ahead to go on this set of packages. So more information, I guess, will be coming to you guys. I understand construction. Yeah. I've lived here all my life. So I understand all that back. Yeah, we, and yeah, the money part no, is we, very yeah, important. Yeah. To, we, we want to, once we get this, we need to be, you know, maybe not every two weeks. It takes us a while to develop them, but definitely on a monthly basis, we can get up with You'll have schedules to follow and each of these groups will have to get updated you know if we start meeting with them because it'll become critical and they're going to be in there messing their system up but they work very hard to do well so, so two weeks i'll come back with that evaluation and we'll look at some potential packaging of what we think can be done in the summer versus what should be done you know in the longer duration and if that works packaging wise so we can set some expectations okay I appreciate all you guys' time. Thanks for So we'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks. All right. All right. Probably a sidewalk connection from mm -hmm. door to door, so they can cross off the concrete sidewalk. Okay. Uh, what we're not doing is it's not enclosed, enclosed or, or anything like that. So it's not going to be like an awning over it, which is now again, that's where some of those alternates come into play. We can certainly design a, a, a post and real canopy type awning where you can walk under cover and it's raining straight down, but you know, if it starts raining sideways, we're not putting glass, we're not creating any. I would, I would tell you just build a building and then yeah. Yeah. some of those walkways are essentially the buildings. Yeah. 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 So I have one last question. Sure. On the elementary, uh -huh. for number two, the elementary suite, yeah. yeah. is that going to line up to our cafeteria or is that going to fold out a little based on that square footage there? Programmatically right now, I've got it bolting out a little bit, but we're tight between there and the curve. Mm -hmm. And at one point we had that larger and it was going to impact even the curb line. We thought we might have to push the curb out with that new walkway and courtyard back there. But in just looking at the program of what we're going to put in there, I think we can push that back. Um, I personally, without designing it yet on the front, I want it to pop out because it's going to be a new material up against an existing. And if I got a break in the plane, I'm able to change that color or change that, and it looks like it fits. If you try and match up, it looks like you missed. It'll also give us yeah. a wayfinding a aspect mm -hmm. of it to be able to, when you drive up there, you'll see that's the element right. I gotta go to. A little hierarchy in the front and then with it. So I would look better actually break that plane yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you.